My name is Lizzie Velasquez. I'm 24 years old. I think the most I've ever weighed in my 24 years is 64 pounds. The condition that I have is to this day still undiagnosed. We are only aware of two other people in the world. I'm the third one. We don't know how I got it. We don't know why I can't gain weight. The very first time that I realized something was different about me was when I started kindergarten. The kids who were in my class were very confused as to why I didn't look like them. When I started middle school, every time I would go out, I was so self-conscious to where I couldn't even enjoy myself. Adults would just stop pointing and giggling and looking at me like in disgust. It really, really got to me. When I was in high school, I was at home exploring YouTube. When I saw a little thumbnail, I didn't know that by clicking on this little thumbnail that it was going to be something that changed my life completely. I clicked on the video and it said the world's ugliest woman and that's when I saw that there were over four and a half million views and instantly my stomach dropped. In her first television interview since her incredibly moving TED Talk, please welcome Lizzie Velasquez. Hi, Lizzie. Hi. You know, I think you only have to spend about five minutes with Lizzie to appreciate that she is one of the most beautiful women in the world. Thank you. And our whole staff, <laughs> our entire staff has fallen in love with you. <laughs> and before we talk about your reaction to that horrifying uh, thing that you saw online, First of all, you're from Austin, so here in New York, this is the first time you've ever seen snow. This is my first time to see snow, and it's cold. Yes, it's it really is cold. cold. This snow is what you should kind of cancel school for. Yes. In, in Austin, if it's like you empty your freezer with ice and you throw it on the ground, they cancel school for that. Yeah. So it's really yeah. different here. Well, we're a little tougher in New yeah. York, not much. We can handle the heat, but not the cold. But I, I'm just so glad that you've come and that you're having such a wonderful time in New York City, your I first am. visit, as I said. And um, can you explain, Lizzie, how this syndrome affects your day-to-day -day life? Since I'm really tiny, I do have a really weak immune system which means I get cold really easily and I get tired really easily. And if my friends already know and my family knows as well, if they're sick and I'm around them and I have stuff coming up, I force everybody to wear doctor's masks. Really? Yeah, so I won't get sick. I don't blame you because obviously you have to protect your own health. Right. Your story, I think, Lizzie, is so moving and inspiring. But let, let's start when you were 17 and you see this thing posted online calling you the world's ugliest woman. First of all, I know that must have been a harrowing experience, but then you started to read the comments, as you said. What kinds of things did they say? The first comment that I read said, will you please do the world a favor, go get a gun and put it to your head and just kill yourself. And I just started crying and crying and I read all the comments. And eventually, as I sat there for about an hour, the tears kind of quickly turned to anger. Well, you know, your parents are here, Guadalupe and Rita, and so nice to have both of you here as well. And, and Rita, how difficult was it to see your daughter being tormented in this way? It was really hard. The day she saw the video, she came out with her laptop and she was crying and saying, look what they did, look what they did. And so we really tried finding how to get the video off. Um, we tried several times trying to get the video taken off. And, and was, the man refused, right? He did, and he actually emailed her and said, no matter how many times you try to take it off, I'm gonna just keep reposting it. Um, so it was really hard to have to have it up there all the time to see the words. I, I couldn't bring myself to read the comments. Um, it was just too much. Guadalupe, what did the doctors tell you when Lizzie was born? Well, of course she was born by emergency C-section, and. I think there was some disbelief and you could see the look on his face and what he basically prepared us was just to say she may have mental delays in her life. She may you know, not be able to walk or talk. You'll have to feed her. And uh, I was just, it didn't matter what he told me because I just was so excited to have her in our life. And no matter what challenges she's going to encounter, we're going to be there to just love her and care for her. I have to say, you know, I admire both of you so much because clearly you have raised Lizzie with such a, a sense of of confidence 
And, and that really did have an incredible impact on you, Lizzie, because one of the things that I noticed from your TED Talk is you have an incredible sense of humor. <laughs> Do you think that's because of your mom and dad? Oh yeah, 100%. It's one of those things where it's all I knew growing up was to be funny and positive. And even though a situation could be really bad, there's always something funny in it. And I've definitely learned how to find that very quickly. <laughs> and in fact, you, during the talk, you, you discuss the upside <laughs> of your situation. Tell us some of the upsides. I, one of the biggest things that I've kind of found or discovered is the benefits of being visually impaired. I'm completely blind in my right eye, so I can only see out of my left. And one would think that could be something that's bad or difficult, but let me tell you, it's pretty awesome because I wear contacts, contact, which means half off contacts. Yeah. Um, I have reading glasses, which means I only need one prescription and the other is just there. Yeah. But one of my personal favorites is if some of my friends or anyone is kind of annoying me or bothering me, I casually have them stand on my right side. <laughs> and it's like they're not even there. I can't see them. So it works. <laughs> Which is so funny. And, and I know that almost five million people have watched, as I said, your, your TED Talk online. And what has the response been? I felt for about a week every day that I was dreaming. It didn't seem real because that speech I had planned out in detail weeks in advance. And as I walked on stage, I decided to change the entire thing. And as I was talking, I just told myself, pretend you're talking to a friend. So the whole speech, I was just kind of talking from my heart. So the fact that so many people watched it and fell in love with it meant so much more to me because I knew it was them liking my personality and me, not the girl with the syndrome or the girl who was labeled the world's ugliest woman. And you know what started seven years ago, right, Lizzie, mm -hmm. as this incredibly horrific experience that was really based in, in the worst kind of cruelty, became in a way a new beginning for you, didn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, without a doubt. When I found this video, I thought it was going to be kind of the end of my life being happy. I thought it was gonna, my confidence was never gonna be built back up after having such horrific things said about me. But throughout time and with a lot of work and support and perseverance, Getting past that video not only helped me, but in turn helped people around the world. Well, I just feel so lucky that I have had this opportunity to meet you and get to know you just a little bit.